In your opinion, as we sit here in 2023, the back end of it, yeah. do you think Moose is still alive in New Zealand? The Fjordland moose borders on being a mythical creature, but in fact, it's a very real animal that just should not be in New Zealand at all, but was introduced over 100 years ago for hunting tourism. A few were shot and killed over time and a few were photographed, but since the 1950s, there has been no official photo or video proof to show they're still out there. But according to a former helicopter pilot, hunter and biologist, the moose stretch well past that 1950s mark. That man's name is Ken Tustin, and I'm off to meet him to see if there really are moose out in the Fjordland. Ken graciously hosted us at his house in Tiana, which is essentially the gateway to the Fjordland. He showed us around the collection he's garnered over the years and sat down to give us a history of moose in Fjordland, New Zealand. So 1910 was their first release, right? 1900 was the first release. Um, it was a failure. The 14 animals that were brought over, all but four, um, died en route in a storm. The ones that were left were, were let go southwest of near Hokitika. Three of them disappeared. One hung around f for 20 years until it was finally shot for being a nuisance. End of story. The second release, 1910, Fjordland, where it was hoped that they'd be less disturbed. Ten young animals, six uh, females, four males were let go in dusky sound. You know, at the, at the time of the release. Oh, wow. It, it, such as a, I've it, never seen that. No, it took me a long, long time to find that. Is this the, which so, one's this one, the 1900 or 1910? This is 1910. Yeah. That's wicked. 1912, um, some miners found sign of most were breeding. It was significant. 1923, commissioned survey reported that they were doing quite well, I thought. 1929, the first trophy moose shot under licence by Eddie Herrick, Seaforth Valley. 1934, the second trophy also shot by Eddie, Eddie Herrick, a Hawks Bay gentleman. In mid-1930s, it was thought that without any information and with red deer you know, changing the hab habitat quite dramatically, that uh, it was likely that moose had become extinct. So it was a bit of a surprise in the early 1950s when moose made an appearance again. April 1951, Rob Francis Smith shot a female moose in what's now called the Henry Burn. And a few months later, August 1951, Jim McIntosh shot a moose in Herrick Creek. And a year later, in April 1952, Percy Lyers shot a moose in Herrick Creek and his companions Rob Francis Smith and Max Curtis took live animal photographs. Now there's one thing of significant interest there for me. Between 1930 and 1950, almost 20 years or so passed without a moose sighting at all. Now not only was there no sightings at all, it was also thought at that point that these moose had gone extinct. So that's one of the reasons why this 1952 photo is really, really exciting. For 20 years or so, there was nothing. They were thought to be extinct, they'd vanished. Then all of a sudden, a photo is capturing one of them. So that means we know they were out there after 1952. This photo of a moose running away symbolizes that. So really, who's to say that moose didn't survive on past that for a number of years, if between 30s and the 50s they weren't seen, weren't heard of, thought extinct? Who's to say that they didn't survive on past that to the 70s, the 80s, maybe even into the present day? There's only one thing getting in the way though, and that's competition. Red deer was the fierce competitor of the moose and in many ways was more suitable in their new habitat. They were able to breed at a faster rate with a seemingly never ending food source being able to graze as well as browse whereas moose could only really browse. This meant moose were already at a disadvantage and as the red deer population increased, it made it harder and harder for moose to gain a foothold in their environment. And after 1952, it was deemed that the moose were surely now done for and were heading right for extinction in New Zealand. And to many people, that's where it all ended. However, in 1971, there were rumours circulating that there were still moose out there. So in 1972, Ken was given the task to go and see if there were still moose around. Um, a small group of us spent 11 weeks just to see if there was any substance to the rumour that moose might still exist. It took nine weeks before we were absolutely sure, which tells you, one, how rare the things were, but two, how we were absolutely unwilling to accept any evidence that we were um, not sure about. And we picked up a cast antler and was likely to live to 1980, so goodbye 1950s 
for uh, most presents. Here's our little antler. Oh, is this the, uh, the 1972? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. So, uh, the nicest thing about these, these phones is one, there's so much information in a cast antler. Yeah. So, um, that tells you that a two and a half year old moose stood in this spot. It was a living animal. Yeah. And um, you could expect it to live another eight, ten years. Been lying in, a, you know, moss and yeah. stuff, and it's been chewed by mice and things. But um, nice find, yeah. And not interpretive in any way. You know, no one said, I think this is moose sign because it looks like this. This is, you know, skeletal evidence that's pretty well it's, it's clear as that isn't it yeah oh yeah well, um, clear eyes oh yeah M moose antlers different configuration yeah, times like forward deer, right? yeah out the side not out the top yeah exactly yeah um, so it's like that right should be like that yeah exactly rather than up here yeah that's so, wicked yeah, though, that, isn't it nice find yeah yeah Lucky what find. possession that is yeah so i came out of that survey and that's what my conclusion was yes moose exist no, there's hardly any. The reason was they were being outcompeted by red deer, and that unless something extraordinary happened, then moose, you know, were doomed for extinction. The thing is that something extraordinary did happen. And that was the venison industry. In the 1960s, as red deer were overpopulated, New Zealand realised there was money to be made from them, so hunting them became a massive thing. Helicopters loaded with gunmen would hunt down the deer, and this would go on for years, drastically reducing the population. They eventually started capturing the deer too, to be transferred off to farms and keep this money maker going. This drastic change in the red deer population would see a change in the forest and a resurgence in growth. However, Ken would go on to work abroad in places like Laos and Antarctica, so didn't have much time time to be searching for these moose. That's until another 20 years or so later, into the 90s when camera traps were primitive, Ken got his hands on some and started placing them in the fjordland and by 1995... I've ended up with 400,000 red deer shots. Only one of a moose. And that's a story in itself. <laughs> and this is that fabled shot. Caught on a time-lapse camera trap in 1995, there are a series of shots and a very brief moment of video. The time-lapse camera was scheduled to take a photo every four seconds, and if something came close enough, it would then start filming. So this right here is the time-lapse shot, a mere shot in the dark. But then this here is the start of the filming as the animal came close enough. It's hard to make out in that footage, but here seems to be the clearest shot of what could be a moose caught on camera in 1995. Oh, this is the photo. Yeah. Tell me that's a fucking red deer. Uh, do you know what? Like, I've seen, uh, we've seen this. I, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I think it's a moose. Yeah. Like, when you compare it to the other shots of the red deer. Oh, that's it. That's absolutely from stance, colour, shape, short neck. Solitary. It's got all the right things going for it to be a moose, as Ken said. There were also red deer caught in the same area, and they look like this from the same spot. You can see the differences, and it's just a shame that this photo couldn't be any clearer. The presence of moose in, in the mid-1990s was so unlikely, so verging on the ridiculous, that, that even that photograph failed to shift. People. And while that may be the case, that didn't stop Ken from carrying on his searches to prove once and for all that the moose were out there, so he decided to ramp it up a notch. The best tool we had would be DNA evidence, and we, we did that with hair samples in 2001 and 2000. And two. 2001 and 2002 were to be crucial years for moose evidence as it's hard to argue against DNA. In 2001, a father and son combo were on a hunting trip in the Fjordland, on a boat cruising along until all of a sudden they heard the roar of a red deer stag. They quickly got off the boat and went in search of it. Heading inland after this animal, they stumbled across some hoof prints that were gigantic. They then found what appeared to be a bedding site and thought they were possibly on the trail of a monster red deer or a moose. They saw some hair in the bedding and decided to take it. The Father and son carried on their trip and bumped into some other hunters and upon telling them about the moose, they suggested to get in touch with Ken, so they did. Ken took these hair samples, 25 in total, and he sent them off for DNA testing. Most of the results were of no use and nothing could be identified, probably due to the elements of the fjordland. But a few results did come back and they showed that of red deer, and some others 
Moose. In 2002 though, this time Ken was on a mission for himself. He searched for weeks and weeks and was gathering hair samples that would be sent off for testing. 60 samples were sent off and excitingly, two came back positive for Moose. The most recent evidence of Moose I've seen dates three years ago, 2020. Ben had spent two seasons in Northern British Columbia as a hunting guide. Moose and caribou were the main targets. His credentials are immaculate. He was a helicopter pilot as a backseat passenger in an R44 on a scenic flight. He looked down and, and standing in a small clearing about the size of this room was a moose right in the middle of it. Kind of considered this the, the core area of the moose range, but historically as you'll see from the map, you know, there's been dots everywhere. Ben's record was in here and you know, huge, Massive. I think 1.3 million hectares or something. And just a few little tracks, one, two, three. So there's a lot of gaps, a lot yeah. of big spaces. To put it into context, Fjordland as a place is bigger than countries like Jamaica and Qatar and only a little smaller than Northern Ireland. It's a huge expanse of wilderness and in places like where the moose are supposed to be, people rarely go there or can even get there. Even for me, it's a $3,000 return trip via a helicopter or seaplane. But I went on a cruise at Milford Sound and saw a place that looked similar. And this is what a lot of the Fjordland looks like. Just look at that. Imagine trying to find a moose in there and you can probably see why one hasn't been spotted in decades. It's absolutely insane. And this goes on and on and on. You see the mountains, the glacier in the background. This is like something from 100 million years ago. It's as pure as it gets, it's crazy. It's so good. But imagine trying to find a moose. <laughs> but with that said, and all the moose history put into chronological order, I had one last question for Ken. As we sit here in 2023, the back end of it, yep. do you think moose are still alive in New Zealand? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure there'll be, I'm, I'm sure moose are alive in New Zealand in Fjordland right now. It's very likely that they'll drift in, into extinction just as I predicted in, a, in the 70s, which, which turned out that I was wrong or that my timing was wrong. Now with all things said and done, after spending a few hours with Ken and his wife Marg, seeing all the evidence, being around them as people, I've got to say, I'm convinced that somewhere out there, there is a moose still alive today in 2023. Someone's just got to find it. <laughs>